Why don't I ever do a video on an ICE vehicle fire, internal combustion engine? Well, if you follow me, you already know because it's pretty much a step up from a dumpster fire. But stick with me. Let's compare an ICE vehicle fire to an EV fire. And trust me, you'll see why EV fires are such a nightmare for fire departments. Let's start with this F-150. It may or may not be on fire right now. It's tough to tell, right? Because with a combustion engine vehicle, usually the fire starts with something electrical. Something shorts out, it gets hot, it starts smoldering, and it takes time for that really to develop. But I'll start the timer right here, right as soon as this light begins blinking, because that's when you know something bad is going on inside. Something's cooking in there. Watch how long it takes for this fire to really take hold. Again, something shorted, likely inside the dash, so it's mainly a cabin fire. You see the owner opens the door. Not a lot going on right now, a little bit of smoke. But let's switch over to this EV that's gonna catch on fire. How long before you see smoke to this fire's really ripping? Uh, five or six seconds, right? It happens very quick. Meanwhile, the F-150, it just smolders away for several minutes. In fact, if the vehicle owner hadn't left that door open when they were checking on the inside, there probably wouldn't be any visible fire by the time the fire department got there. With newer vehicles being so airtight, cabin fires are vent limited. They run out of oxygen fairly quickly and they just sit there and smolder. Eventually they'll break through, they'll bust open a window, they'll get that rush of oxygen and really burst into flames, but it takes a long time. Realistically, even a small fire in a vehicle, it's typically a total loss. But seriously, comment below if you've ever seen a car fire that didn't result in a total loss. I've seen one. It was a Lambo, it had a really small engine fire on top of the engine. We got there quick, knocked it out very fast, very little damage, but it's super rare to have that happen. Okay, now this F-150 fire, it's really picking up. I'll start another timer to show you how quickly the fire department handles this. As soon as the fire department starts flowing water, they knock down that fire really fast, probably with less than 200 gallons of water. At this point, all that white stuff you're seeing, that's just the water instantly turning to steam as it hits all that hot metal. It's not actually smoke from the fire itself. At this point, I'd be calling dispatch and letting them know the fire's out. Now the firefighters are trying to pop that hood open, make sure there's no fire in the engine compartment itself. They're trying to pop that hood open. They're still trying. Seriously though, once that release cable's melted, you have no handle to pop open that hood, it becomes a total pain in the rear. There's usually nothing solid to pry against. There's not a lot of frame structure up there, so you're kind of putting your Helgen in there, you're pushing against the radiator, you, you got some thin metal, but what I like to do is bust out the spreaders, get it in there, pop open the hood, and that makes it pretty easy, makes things quick. But once they get that open, they'll check under the hood for any smoldering bits, and that's it. Fire's out, hazard's gone. The crew will be clearing soon. They won't be on scene any longer. So with an ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine vehicle, the fire department wraps things up quickly. No real surprises, just a little steam, a stuck hood release, and some cleanup. You're looking at right around 30 minutes. Now let's look at that EV fire. These behave very differently, and that's where my background in R&D and failure analysis comes into play. I worked as a mechanical engineer in the auto industry for as long as I've been a firefighter. Recently, a big part of my job was developing the battery box structure for electric vehicles, studying how these batteries fail, but also understanding how to contain that failure inside the battery box itself. It's not about just slapping batteries into a vehicle. I spent a lot of time trying to understand why these batteries fail and analyzing what happens during these larger thermal runaway events. This kind of research helps engineers understand what can go wrong, but it also is important for firefighters to know what they're up against. Now, let's compare that F-150 with the EV fire. It takes nine seconds for this EV to start ripping, and that's compared to an ICE vehicle at four and a half minutes, and that's just to have visible flames, and around six and a half minutes for that F-150 to be really ripping. I know, it's a bit subjective, but how fast that fire progresses is just part of the problem. Another major issue is how long the fire department stays on scene. With the F-150, they had the fire out in about three minutes, and total on scene was right around 20 minutes. That's pretty normal. Ironically, I was interrupted while filming this video and had to respond to a vehicle fire. We were in and out within 30 minutes, so not much time at all. 
But with EVs, well, just watch this. The victims were in a Tesla that burned for four hours. After six hours, that electric vehicle not only burned for hours, it took them an hour to get it under control, causing a fire that burned for hours. But with EVs, even when you put out the fire, you're not really done. There's always a risk of reignition because of that stranded energy. And that could happen hours, days, or even months later. But once the fire was out, it reignited on the tow truck. It flared up again. The firemen, you know, came back. It turns out this was the second time this Tesla had caught fire. It's really why fire departments need to follow that tow truck to the salvage yard with an apparatus, because there is that risk of reignition. And sometimes when it's sitting there at the salvage yard, you have another reignition event. There are a lot of unique challenges when it comes to an EV fire or a lithium-ion battery fire, and that's the real reason why I do these videos.